a friend of yours yeah. gave shahad. He is he's family to me. Um, mm -hmm. And when he gave a shahad, I promised that I'll bury him when he passes away the, the Islamic way. Uh, on my way here, I, pa I found out that he just passed away. You know that I see him a few true. days ago. Um, and my, my brothers and I, we offered to, to bury him, but his family don't want to do that. They want to take him back to New York, put him on this play, and cremate him. That's not something he wanted. Now, I feel like I'll be questioned for this because I promised him. Yes or no? This is when the murid must consult with the sheikh now. Mm -hmm. um, because, no, you did this three years ago, this is before you met us, yes. obviously. Now, even if you've met us, it'll be good to say, I did this, what am I supposed to do? I did this, I made this kind of promise. Then they will tell you which extent it is your help. It is a good intention now to do that. Mm -hmm. However, we are living in the world where shariat is not ruling. It is the law of the land that is ruling. You can only reach so much. You understand? Yeah. Allah is looking at our intentions more than our actions. Yes, you made that promise. But are you leaving that promise because you don't want to spend the money, you're too lazy, you are, it's too inconvenient? No, it's because the law now is preventing you. The law is preventing you. The family has the right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unless, now this is when I said consultation, unless if you're consulted with us, mm -hmm. and then we will say, okay, you made that promise to him, but this is up to him. But if such a thing were to happen, and if there is no legal uh, precaution taken, then the family will have the right. If the family wants to burn him, they'll burn him. If the family wants to bury him, the family wants to flush him down the toilet, they have that right to do that. You don't because you're not family. However, in order to protect yourself and his interest in Islam, for the sake of Islam, then he has to write a will. Ah, this yeah. is when consultation it is important. Because a sheikh is there not only to read what is in the heavens, not only to read what is in the hearts, but to understand what is happening in this world and to protect and to prepare the people because we are living in this world. Correct? Okay. We are not living in our hearts, con disconnected from this world, in a cave somewhere. We are not living in the heavens or in the different alams. We are living here. This is dunya. This is one of our enemies. We are living in dunya. Where this is dunya, this is enemy territory. Guess what? Dunya has much, much support coming from shaitan. Is here. Mm -hmm. Shaitan is ruling in this dunya. Allah gave shaitan the power. When I say shaitan is ruling, does it mean that I'm saying Allah is not ruling over everything? Of course Allah is ruling over everything, but he has given the authority of shaitan here. Correct? Our hawa is rising here. The ego is here. So now the Naqshbandi way to be able to engage in the biggest struggle, the biggest jihad, the biggest struggle, the biggest struggle now is against your ego and other people's egos. So you understand, that one's ego, the family's ego, that friend's ego, that family's ego is going to prevent this from happening. So you will take precautions. This is not even fighting. This is taking precautions. Okay? You have to fight against shaitan, inside and out. You have to fight against the pull of this dunya. You have to fight against your hawa, your desires too, and other people's desires. Maybe you don't desire, but your family desires. What are you going to do? These days when they say family is number one, you're supposed to give in? No, you're not. Then you are not in the way. So if there is consultation, one way or another, they are not opening the way for you to consult, then that is destiny that is reached to him. You have done as much as you can. But if he had come to us, we would say he has to write something. He has to make sure that everything is intact. But still, we don't force. And if the family is going to contest, then it is out of our hands too. But he has to make it very clear. Correct, not lawyer? Correct. Huh? Over here, we are saying to people, write down, even if they're Muslims now, write down. You have to prepare for your will. A will, a contract, it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet has made mandatory for us. Our shahadat is a contract. You understand? Our faith is a contract. We promise to do all these things. It is a contract now. Now this is necessary for everyone here. Because you can be Muslim 
But your family can have rights over your jasatna, over your body too. We see, you say, for example, I want to be buried like this. And I want to have. Then they say, no, we want to be, take him. We want to ship him to Pakistan three months later. I don't know, one week later. And then we want to bury him somewhere near a family plot or this or that. That can happen also. Then we, our hands cannot reach to that. We don't have the power. So you have to prepare for this. What if you are coming into Islam? Oh, now that time, you have to make sure that everything is more powerful, more legit. All right? By your intention, it is accepted. And you did not know so much. Now that you are here, it is our duty now to make people to understand what is the tricks and traps of the shaitan and the ego and the dunya. Outside, we must prepare ourselves as much as we can because that preparation, that is farce. You understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying success is farce. Eh? He is not telling us, you must succeed, otherwise I'm not going to accept you. But he's saying, prepare. Prepare. When you make that, you take precautions and you prepare, then you'll fight well according to those preparations. Allah is going to decide the outcome. Yeah? One question. Um, Say. When you prayed Salat uh, al-Janazah, al -Ghaib, yes. I made intentions for him. Is that sufficient enough? Very good. Yeah. You can do that. You can... Make some zikr for him. Okay, for his sake. You can give sadaqah for him for his sake. A little bit, doesn't have to be so much. Allah is not looking at extravagance, whether in our uh, prayer or our amal or ibadat. He's not looking for extravagance, but something that's small, that's sincere, that's coming. You can feed the poor. You understand? You can open up a well. But living here in America, where we are given so many things, don't opt for the easy, lazy option. You understand? Easy, lazy option. It'll make us very stupid, and stupidity is not a characteristic of a believer. You become more and more and more gaffle at that time, but you become stupid, you become stupid to shaitan also. People are going out of their way to ask the to ask the sheikhs for help, uh, when help reaches to them, so many they take the easy option. You know what the easy option is? They don't even say thank you. You know, not that we are demanding. We're not asking. We've come to expect that is they're not going to thank. Ah, some thank. Okay, that is also an easy option. We're not here saying you have to pay. <laughs> you understand? There's not going to be too much blessing too. When in the work of Allah, that you're demanding payment from this world. Not too much blessing. Okay? But the person has to sincerely thank and do something. When the person does that, then the contract is binding. Then the forces, Allah and the Prophet, good ones, will protect you because there is that. So try. Try to do something a little bit more. Not just something small. For his sake. That uh, should be okay, inshallah. What else? That's it for me. Yeah, Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.